Hello and welcome to another TLDR Global video. Ebola. It's not something we wanted to talk about following the last year we've just been through. You probably remember the Ebola outbreak that swept through West Africa between 2013 and 2016. Approaching 29,000 cases were reported in 10 countries, but the outbreak primarily affected the African nations of Liberia, Sierra Leone and Guinea, with all but 15 of the 11,000 deaths occurring in just these three countries. Fortunately though, the issue subsided and the World Health Organization were able to terminate the public health emergency in March of 2016. Less fortunately, mid-February this year, three cases of Ebola were again reported in Guinea, these being the first cases in the region since 2016. This new outbreak obviously has people concerned, especially when it's coming on top of the existing Covid pandemic. So in this video, we aim to explain exactly what's happening why Ebola's back, what can be done to prevent another major incident like we had last decade, and how worried you ought to be. We first covered this topic in our series The Global Summary. That's the show where we run through some of the biggest news stories of the week from all around the world. We try to choose topics that you might have missed from countries that you don't always hear from to give you a full global summary. If you want to see that series and the rest of our videos, then make sure you subscribe to the channel because a lot of you haven't. Thanks so much for your support. Before we discuss this outbreak, or the one that preceded it in the 2010s, let's first discuss what Ebola is and how the virus operates. Ebola originated in 1976, and like many viruses, it initiates in animals and then can be transmitted into humans. Once it has infected humans, Ebola is capable of spreading via broken skin or mucous membranes. Unlike viruses like COVID-19, which can be spread asymptomatically, this isn't possible with Ebola. Transmission of Ebola is only possible once a person experiences symptoms, with symptoms being absolutely horrible too, ranging from fever and fatigue to vomiting, diarrhea and bleeding. Because symptoms need to appear first, and physical contact with bodily fluids is normally required to spread, rather than it being airborne, Ebola is not as transmissible as other viruses. However, Ebola unfortunately has a very high fatality rate, with the average fatality across all outbreaks at approximately 50%, but in very specific outbreaks it's reached 90%, which ironically helps to reduce spread. Because while dead people are still infectious, they're not going to go to the shop and unknowingly spread the virus while refusing to wear a mask. So now we know what the virus is, how did it attack in the 2013-2016 outbreak? Well, the outbreak is thought to have originated in December 2013 via a young toddler in Guinea who was given the virus by a bat. From there, it began to spread at a fast pace, and by the summer of 2014, Ebola had well and truly taken root in the region. This particular outbreak was assigned as a public health emergency of international concern that August, and from there, problems continued for basically another two years. There are a vast swathe of reasons why this outbreak was so devastating, but here are a few of the key ones. Firstly, West Africa had not really experienced Ebola outbreaks before, and thus lacked the virus-related infrastructure to deal with it properly. Also, due to poverty and recent conflicts in the three countries most affected, traditional infrastructure like roads that are crucial in medical emergencies were also poor. Another reason was the fluidity of movement between borders in the region, which allowed the virus to very quickly get into new countries and cities, where it could spread faster and faster. Thirdly, doctors, nurses and health workers were in very short supply. Another commonly cited reason is the cultural landscape of the region, especially when it comes to caring for the infirm and particular funeral rituals, which are culturally important but can be major sources of transmission. This isn't helped by poor community engagement, but that's something we'll come to later. So these are some of the main reasons why the outbreak was so bad between 2013 and 2016. Since then though, Ebola has continued to be a problem for the continent, with another outbreak happening in the Democratic Republic of Congo between 2018 and 2020. That does mean that attention continued to be pointed at the virus, meaning that research and vaccine development continues to this day. 
So if the virus was suppressed in 2016 and hasn't been seen, at least in the West African region since then, what's caused its return? Well, Ebola was never really gone. It never goes away. It's always circulating in animals. All it needs is the correct circumstances, which for the 2021 outbreak are currently unknown, and it will quickly find its way back into humans. This really is crucial and answers one of the core questions. Why is Ebola back? Because it never really went away. It subsided, stopped spreading among humans in the region, and the world just stopped paying attention because the risk of it spreading to Western nations suddenly dissipated. Anyway, on February 14th, 2021, Guinea contacted the World Health Organization to tell it of a new cluster. Unfortunately, a nurse had died on January 28th, who had been experiencing troubling symptoms. When she sought medical advice, she was first diagnosed with typhoid, and then malaria by a second doctor, before she passed away. Ultimately though, it ended up being Ebola. As of the 25th of February, nine cases have now been located, and five people have died. Of those nine cases, five of the first six were confirmed to be people who attended the funeral of the woman, and the other one was one of the doctors she saw. The government are naturally keen to see its spread limited as far as possible to prevent a full outbreak. Due to this, many people's hopes are resting on vaccines which have been developed in the last few years. There are currently two Ebola vaccines that have been licensed. The first, Herbovo, was initially approved in late 2019, and another was approved in May of 2020. Today, eight African nations have approved Herbivo, and actually it was even used before approval in 2015, as well as being used in the DRC's more recent outbreak. Data from that has shown Herbivo has a 97.5% efficacy rate. So, in January 2021, a global stockpile of Herbivo was established by four organisations, including UNICEF and the WHO, with the goal of distributing vaccines if and when required to try and prevent a further spread. It's these vaccines that are now being shipped to Guinea, with 11,000 being sent initially and 8,600 more coming soon. The hope is that the inoculation might prevent the spread of Ebola within the country, and thus stop it from breaking out into neighbouring regions. The big question is how worried we ought to be, and what's being done to stop the outbreak. Well, in addition to the vaccines that are being shipped, distributed and used, many other strategies are being employed to quash the outbreak and prevent further spreading. Countries sharing a border with Guinea are making sure to be extra cautious, doing their best to identify and help people crossing into their countries who may have been infected. According to the WHO's Regional Director for Africa, systemic surveillance, comprehensive preparations and strong cross-border coordination are crucial. Ultimately, the region's trying to learn from the problems it had in the last major outbreak. According to WHO, since then there's been a greater focus on R&D, rapid testing, health facility capacity, new medications, and of course, the introduction of vaccinations, as well as changes in the structure of how the WHO responds to things like this. The most important lesson that's been learnt though, and this has been emphasised in all official documentation, is the necessity of better and more diverse community engagement. Broadly, there's a lack of trust from communities towards authorities, with research from the 2018-2020 outbreak in the DRC finding that many citizens thought that Ebola was a government scheme to marginalise people, that it was used as a profit-making tool for government, researchers and other outsiders, as well as them not believing in the nation's health system. This level of scepticism isn't necessarily the case in all areas, but the need for community engagement remains high. In the words of Doctors Without Borders, if a community feels involved, heard and empowered, then an Ebola response will likely go well. So we know what we've learnt from past outbreaks, but can the most recent outbreak be controlled? Well, the good news is that experts seem optimistic, having gone through these recent crises. Doctors Without Borders argues that there's a few key steps that need to be taken to control the outbreak. First, there should be epidemiological surveillance to understand what's going on. After that, there has to be contract tracing and isolation, as well as ensuring there are properly kitted out medical centres with all of the correct protocols in place. 
There should also be an emphasis on funerals being carried out in a safe way, as well as continued informational programs. For all of this to be achieved though, community engagement is crucial. Thanks to recent progress and scientific development, a ring vaccination strategy has been employed, which basically targets those who are most likely to have contracted the virus, attempting to encircle the virus and prevent it from spreading outside of the originating group. In a trial of the ring vaccination strategy in Guinea back in 2015, this technique showed impressive results. So it looks like the region is undoubtedly in a better position than they had been previously. This definitely is a worrying time and will inevitably lead to more tragedy, but it's not thought that this outbreak will reach the same levels we saw in the 2013-2016 wave. It seems that a combination of fast action, treatment and vaccination, and community engagement should all help confining Ebola and making sure that it doesn't get out of hand again. So that's where things stand right now. It's natural to be worried by outbreaks like these, but at the moment, there's still a lot to learn about these newly emerging Ebola cases. We'll continue to update you once we know more, so be sure to subscribe to the channel for more videos like this, as well as our weekly global summary, where you can get updated quickly on stories all around the world. Special thanks to our Patreon backers who make videos like this one possible, and if you want to see your name at the end of videos, then you too can back us on Patreon. The link to that's in the description.